Welcome to Woman to Woman Today, where we're highlighting inspiring women with conversation and fun projects that will teach us something new. We want this show to be a bright spot in the lives of today's modern woman, and I'm your host, Jen Maceda. Now listen, if you've ever struggled to find something in your closet or wished you'd been trained to organize your office space, you need to keep watching today's show. With us today is Stacia Steele, the owner and COO, that's Chief Organizing Officer of The Little Details. She's had a knack for organizing since she was a child, so Stacia has always wanted to help others simplify their lives. She's appeared on television series Hoarding, Buried Alive on TLC, the television pilot SLOBS, Rhode Island's morning show, The Road Show, W4WN's radio show, Clean Green Talk Show, and now Stacia Steele is with us on Woman to Woman today. Welcome, Stacia. We're really looking forward to you helping us and simplifying our lives. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being here. Okay, so tell us. Tell us about this concept and how it started. Mm -hmm. What does the little details do? So we are a professional organizing and home staging firm in Boston. We help people in their homes, their offices, anywhere you can imagine, their garage, their car. You can organize anything, anything and everything. That's great. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever be without a job. No. This is, every, everyone is going to need you <laughs> yes. for a long time to come. Yes. Okay, so um, what inspired you to create this business? So I, I had grown up very organized and always organized for fr family, friends, everyone that you can imagine. I, it was just naturally part of me and what I did around people, for people, in my own house, try to make my house simpler. And um, and I'm meaning when I was a child, waking up in the middle of the night and wanting to organize closets to make more order in my home. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, th this, is your, this is your job. Yes. <laughs> Little did I know yes. that this is where I'd be. That's I funny. had no idea that this would be a business I would have and a, yeah. a career that I would have. And um, I, I went to college for criminal justice and psychology and um, really was on a, on a completely different path. And then about seven years ago, decided to move from Florida up here. I wanted nicer weather. Meaning, oh, okay, yes. a change of weather. Yes, too, so yes. I can see how a change of weather. Yeah, is, is I love pleasant. the four seasons instead of ten months yeah. of summer. Okay. So it was, it was definitely just a big change, and I was excited for that and to try to figure out what I wanted to do with my career. I had no idea. Came up here with no job, no prospects whatsoever. So who inspired you? Who, who really? helped you to to get this idea cultivated and, and yeah. energized and make it happen. So I, I ended up skimming Craigslist uh, for a couple of days and saw personal assistant jobs very frequently and decided to reach out to a couple of people. I ended up uh, taking two jobs as a personal assistant and nanny to two families in Cambridge wow. at the same time. That's a lot. Yes. So I'd be at one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And I, I worked with them for a little bit of over a year, each family, and they both ended up moving away at the same time. Mm. And when they were moving, I had to sit there and say, okay, now what's next? What sure. am I going to do? And they each in their own way had a different conversation with me, but really saying, I think you need to do this for more people and not just maybe one or two families at a time. So that's where the idea, like the seed got planted then. Um, and then over time, I kept talking with them and trying to figure out what That's was great. I going to do. Sure. Yep. So who's your client base for the little details? Who do you typically, who, who reaches out to you? Everyone, every mm. age, gender, income level you can imagine. Really? So anywhere from uh, a student with ADHD that's struggling to get to class on time and get their work done, sure. to um, mothers that are needing help nesting, <laughs> getting their okay. home ready when they're having a baby, sure. um, people that need their home staged, um, seniors downsizing, and hoarders also. It's, it seems like almost critical times in, in people's lives. They, mm -hmm. they just need that sense of stability and yeah. organization. It's um, usually a transition, a pretty big transition is happening where they need help getting through that. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Tell me what the strength, if you can, mm -hmm. without naming names. Yeah. What is the strangest request that somebody has made? So this was actually a really um, interesting thing to think about. I. 
I think that the strangest thing has to be, which is kind of normal because we get asked all sorts of funky things. Okay. So at this point, it's kind of normal. But okay. um, we were asked to help cull and and really just process a bunch of messages on a dating website for a client that didn't have time to go through all the different messages that she was getting. And then we even helped her to formulate a like a template on how to respond to people. Oh my God. <laughs> so we help people in every aspect of their lives. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be email, dating websites, sure. it's all of the above. Oh my, yeah. that, that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. that, that You must have such a tremendous job. So just speaking of closets, mm -hmm. who is a closet that you would love to get your hands on and you would love to just be in it and transform it and <laughs> yeah. organize it? I, I think Oprah, <laughs> even though I'm pretty sure yeah, she has like Peter that. Walsh on speed dial. Okay. He's been on her show many times, but I think that her closet would be so much fun. Okay. All right. But let's get to really, you know, what this show is all about. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's, it's um, about women's issues, um, issues mm -hmm. that are impacting women and and um, how we can inspire each other right. to, to get over some of the hurdles that we're facing yep. um, and reach the goals that we have for mm -hmm. ourselves. I, I think that in a way I actually had an advantage with this business um, over maybe my male counterparts because being a woman and being in such a personal business, we literally organize people's underwear drawers. Yeah. There's a sensitivity that you need to have. And as a woman and having 90% female clients, okay. it's, it makes them more comfortable to have me there in their home. And, and they know that I've had to organize my own things. They, it, we can relate very, very easily. Yeah. And so that actually made it a lot easier for me. That's to start this business sure. and to have that That's level great. of sensitivity. That's right. So mm -hmm. some of the some of the characteristics that are essential um, and and are what make us women. Yep. You know, help to to yep. establish your business. Yeah. What do you wish somebody would have told you uh, when you were younger? Uh, that this career existed. <laughs> <laughs> because okay. I did find out that there are organizers that have been around for a very long time okay. and I never knew that this could yeah. be a possibility as a career. That would have been really interesting to see my path through college okay. and, and afterwards if I had that in mind. Yeah. Would you have done something differently, you think? Definitely. I would have taken different courses in school. Okay. I'm so glad that I did take my psychology courses. It's helped me tons and tons on a daily basis. That's the best thing that I could have done for sure. But I probably would have taken courses in business management, marketing, things like that, more obvious choices. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And and who's inspiring you now? Who really gives you yeah. some direction and some some guidance? I think my my business coach has been one of the best resources for me. She's been there for the good time the hard times, everything in between, mm -hmm. and she just gives me the absolute best advice. She's across the country, and she used to be an organizer herself, also a lawyer, oh, okay. and a business coach now, sure. and she just has a wealth of information that she's pulling from, yeah. but I also get very inspired by my team members and my clients, too, because they're the ones that I'm working with day in and day out that need the help, that need resources, and it just makes me a better organizer. Yeah, I, I bet. Mm -hmm. um, always learning from each other is always yeah. the way to, to move us forward. Yeah. What's happening with the business next? Where, where do you see this taking off and, and, um, and potentially scaling? Yeah, so we have a great team in Boston right now, but we frequently get asked to help out down on the Cape and the islands. So we'd love to build a team down there that's specifically to serve Cape Cod, Martha's, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket. Okay, to be able to, to reach yep. out further yep. to uh, different communities. Yep. Um, that's really great. Um, again, brilliant idea. If someone wanted to uh, ask for your help, mm -hmm. what would they do to to uh, to reach you? And yeah. um, tell me a little bit if you can. Mm -hmm. I, I know every client is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So what what are some of the costs that are associated with having you help? other people? Yes, yeah, so we, we charge on an hourly basis, depending on which organizer you work with, how senior they are um, on our team. And we work in four hour long sessions when we're organizing, which can be 
amazing or absolutely exhausting, depends on the person. <laughs> um, and I'm saying for them, for us, we're always up for it. But um, we, so we work in four hour long sessions together. And if they want to work with us, then they can contact us at thelittledetails.me and go to our Let's Chat page and fill out a short little form about what they need help with. Okay, and and when I did that and, mm -hmm. and reached out to you, mm -hmm. you had a great organizational <laughs> application that yeah. allowed you to put in the exact time that you wanted to yep. meet, and <laughs> yeah, so that's when I knew that you were the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> a lot even, of people say that actually. No, it's really true. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Even with the form. Yep. That's great. So what else would you want to tell them? Some of the the viewers that are watching today. Um, how, what can you say to inspire them to reach their goals like you've done? I think get a great team around you. Get uh, get a great lawyer, <laughs> possibly a great coach. And also make sure that you have great family and friends around you that are going to help you out when things get tough, because they definitely do. That starting a business, especially on your own, is not easy. It's very long days, very late nights, long weekends. It's, it's a lot of work, but it really does pay off if it's something that you're truly passionate about about and you feel like you're going to change the world around you, it makes it all very worth it. That's great. Well, we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. On the second half of our show, we'll be doing a fun project with Stasia that will teach us how to organize our office space so we'll actually be able to find that credit card file that we've been looking for. Stay with us. Hi. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. I'm Jenny Garth. And as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover key tar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. to Woman Today. I'm your host, Jen Maceda, and we are here again with Stasia Steele. She is the COO, Chief Organizing Officer for The Little Details, and Stasia is going to walk us through how to organize our office. So yes. welcome back, everybody. You want to be here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, so we are going to walk through some simple steps of how to organize your office, whether that's at home or at work, doesn't matter. Um, it's the same basic principles that we go over. Okay. So what we notice with paper is that it really is the most stressful thing in someone's house, whether they even realize it or not. When we get to it, most people try to avoid it. There's a lot of it. Yes, yes. there's a lot of it. They don't know what to do. They okay. just feel like it's endless. They, they don't know which way to go with it. So the just acknowledging that you have that stress over paper is a good thing at first, and then get down to 
to how am I actually going to process this? Don't okay. look at it as just one big picture. Um, I myself went 100% paperless about a year ago. Oh, wow. And it was the best thing I've ever done when it comes to organizing. I absolutely love being paper free. Um, so this is a lot of what I did for myself to get rid of paper. And now when things come in, I have a simple process of a piece of paper comes in. I either handle it right there. It's like an action item mm -hmm. or I scan it and then I can get rid of it okay. and then I shred it. So it's, it's very easy okay. to, to move through the paper that way. I don't let it build up. And a lot of people will also let their mail build up sure. over time. Um, and that causes them even more stress because then there's this giant pile that they're procrastinating on dealing with. So if you work on little bits at a time, I know we've all heard that before, yeah. like little chunks of things, True. but it really does help a lot. So our acronym comes from actually Julie Morgenstern's book, uh, Organizing from the Inside Out. Okay. The acronym is SPACE. So it stands for SORT, purge, assign, ca containerize, and equalize. Okay. So in the sorting phase, you're really grabbing all your stuff together and trying to put like with like. It's a kind of a big general sort at okay. first. And what we do is we use these bins right here mm -hmm. called packaways. This is one of our little secrets that we use at the little details. And we label them on the outside, whether it's to shred or if it's trash or if it's to donate. So you can just use that to sort out your things, even if it's office supplies in one and maybe your folders in another. You can use something to kind of contain what you're actually sorting out so it doesn't right. just become this big old heap on the floor. Okay, and, um, and when it gets piled up and mm -hmm. you know you see this as, as really being full, yeah. that's when you then, take your next step? Yep, okay. so then we purge this. So okay. once you've got everything. Just pick it up and toss it. <laughs> Just throw it like, all okay, away that, and start That from. I can do, okay. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so, so then the next phase is purging. Okay. So we would purge each of those categories mm -hmm. that you've already created. And you don't have to get specific on what those categories are right now. That's not the time to do that okay. at all. So you're purging either by donating stuff that's in your office that you don't actually need anymore sure. or recycling it, shredding it, what have you. If it's just trash, get it out. Okay. So it's just a way of getting rid of that excess. Okay. So then we use the shredder. Okay. Now let's say mm -hmm. there are some action items mm -hmm. that a procrastinator, a procrastinator like me mm -hmm. is going to put it off. Mm -hmm. Is there a bucket that I need to put that in or should I really train myself to get that off my list and get it done immediately. So especially women with children, we all know, even men with children, yes. we know that you can't just get right, right to it and get it all done right then when right. you'd like to. In an ideal world, yes, we, we could try to say that we could, but it's not going to happen. So the reality is that when you do have time to revisit that, you need to have it in the same place every time that you need to go back to okay. and say, these are my yeah. action items, got it. this is what I've got to get done. And rather than sorting through each pile, trying right. to figure out what of those things do you need to get done right away? Okay. So that's what we really recommend. Great. So um, when we love this shredder, the Staples Mailmate shredder, it's fantastic. It's nice, easy, compact. It actually shreds 12 pieces of paper at the same time. Oh, wow. And even CDs and credit cards. Okay. So you don't have to delay and say, oh, I've got to cut up that whole pile of stuff later. No, just stick it right in here. Perfect. If you have a ton of shredding, though, we don't recommend doing it yourself because that's just another way to to make the project take even longer to get done. So Staples offers a dollar per pound shredding where you can just take it there, oh, drop okay. it off, and they do it for you. That way you're not dulling your blades or sure. taking the time. It does take a lot of time if you have okay. bins and bins right, right, right. full of shredding. Um, or you can even use a local company called uh, Dock Shredding Corporation that we use very frequently that they'll actually come to your house. They can shred it right on the truck or they take it in an armored truck okay. away to their facility okay. and shred it there. And that's not shredding everything. You can recycle no. something, yes. but the, what are the things? Yeah. Things that you should re you should definitely oh, shred definitely bills so okay. any bills that are going to have identifying information yep. on them um, definitely uh, old tax records if okay. you're getting rid of things like that the things that are really like the important paperwork that you have right. um, medical paperwork for sure okay um, but everything that has your address it's it's not necessary okay yep 
Okay, good. So then uh, the next part of this is a sign. So we've got sort, purge, now yeah. we're in a sign. Okay. So in a sign, we're saying, okay, what are the home, where are we actually going to have this stuff live? Yeah. Where is its home going to be? Is it gonna be in my office? Okay. Maybe in the basement, maybe right. another room in the house. Um, you just need to decide, am I going to have all of my action files in one place and my reference files in another? So okay. we differentiate between the two. So your action files are your to-dos, your I need to read this, I need to respond to this in some kind of way. Reference is tax records okay. that you're not you're not right. accessing those on a keep daily them, basis. But it's not okay. Yep, exactly. And then it's also about saying, okay, where where is this actually going to live? How close by do I need it to me? Is it right by my desk? Is yeah. it behind me? Just really figuring out where that home is going to be is very important okay. for that to be efficient for you to use. Okay. So then the next part is containerize. Mm -hmm. So that is figuring out how are you going to contain all of the stuff right. that you want to keep? Because okay. you've already purged, you've gotten rid of the stuff yep. you don't need anymore. So where are you going to keep it? So most people do tend to want a file cabinet. Okay. Some people have an aversion to them for good reason. <laughs> but <laughs> most people do want a file cabinet and whether that's um, our standard two drawer or you really need a full on, you know, a fleet right. <laughs> of file cabinets depending on how big your office is. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter and it's really a personal choice at that point. Uh, there's no right or wrong answer. So then you need to figure out, well, how am I actually storing the paperwork even when it is filed away? Right. So we love these poly folders that we also buy at Staples. Okay. Um, they're very durable. Big I'm sure plugs we've... for Staples. Today. Yes, <laughs> not meaning to, but we go they're there frequently. Supporters. Yes, we okay. are frequent shoppers. Um, so we love these poly folders though because they hold up so well over time. Okay. You know you've always had a manila folder that will rip here yes, and there. Right. So these slide nice and easy. Okay. You're not getting that scraping sound. Yep. They also have poly subfolders inside. So again, okay. not tearing here. Yep. And then we get into how we're labeling these things. So again, with containing, you're saying, all right, now how am I actually going to identify this information? Where is it going to be? So we have our own fancy little filing system. It's really not all that fancy, okay. but it's quite easy, but it's different than what most people are used to. So we put our main category over mm -hmm. here on the left. So here it's financial. Okay. On the right side are subcategories, and they actually go in a line. It'll be in a straight line rather than in a diagonal. Interesting. We naturally, as human beings, do not read at a diagonal. Okay. We read in straight lines sure. or exactly left to right. right. So we have found that actually putting these in a straight line, you can find what you need a lot faster. Huh. We do alphabetize the subcategory so it's even faster. Oh, so that's when you think credit cards right. versus mortgage or something like that, Perfect. you know where to you find, know exactly it. Where I find it. Yep. And then on the inside, so you'll see the guide takes you yep. from the, the mm -hmm. main category to the subcategory to the sub of the subcategory. So Visa, That's for great. instance, is on here. So That's if brilliant. you follow <clears throat> that, you'll always be able to find your, your thing. Yeah. Where do you come up with these tips? Because these are fantastic <laughs> tips. And and although you were born <laughs> with very organized. <laughs> very organized yes. and very crafty. Yes. How, yes. how do you keep up with the new and, and exciting tips yeah. that you give your clients? So I think having my own business, I've had to definitely push my organizing skills to the limit. It, I feel okay, like sure. and it's constantly making me try to find different ways to be more efficient more productive in my own life um, but then my clients too I'm working with them I'm problem solving all day long every day yeah um, so I'm always trying to find another solution for something yeah and I, I naturally am a very curious person mm -hmm. and I always think there must be a solution out there I'm sure. not the first person to ask this question okay. so I just have to google it well enough to find there it there you go so um that's great. And then I I do um, I do a lot of webinar webinars I do conferences sure. the National Association of Professional Organizers have a, has a conference every year okay. uh, coming up very soon and so you're um, investing in yourself yes so that you can expand your yes. own knowledge and your own learning yep That's my great. reading is not exactly for fun it's really yes. about organizing <laughs> which is fun for me yeah <laughs> well yep. that brings up a good point because there's so many new books mm -hmm. that are on the national bestseller yep. list now yep. and and I I feel like people are coming out of the closet with their yeah. their problems with mm -hmm. organizing yeah. and it's becoming more culturally acceptable yeah. to ask somebody to come into your homes and yep. organize your underwear drawer or yep. organize your office and see personal 
um, items with somebody yeah. that you trust yes. um, that's going to help you to, to essentially mm -hmm. have a, a more effective and mm -hmm. a more peaceful life. I yes, feel. definitely. Yeah. Uh, organizing was not known as a, a normal profession that everyone just knew about. A lot of people thought I organized events, that that's what a professional organizer meant. Right. It's become so much more normal to hear someone talk about an organizer. And I do attribute that to the, the books that are, are out there right now. There's Julie Morgenstern's books have been around for years and years, and they are such solid books. Um, and then there's Marie Kondo's books. Um, she's gotten a lot of great reviews lately. There's so yeah. many of our clients that have read that before they call us, okay. and then they say, okay, this was great, but help me do help it. Me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Help, help me now. Help me actually home. do this That's myself. Right. Um, so there's there's also the tiny house movement going on too, and people are so You're motivated right. to just shrink Scale their that, stuff. Right. Definitely. Yeah, and huh. we're seeing too that um, children don't want their their family's furniture like they used to. There aren't as many heirloom pieces Got as it. there used to be. Um, there we do live in more of a disposable world, okay. and it's it's more common to buy furniture yeah. at Target and at you know things at Bed Bath and Beyond, yeah. and it's not exactly pieces you want to keep around forever. So there's not going to be as much passed down, which yeah. is good in that way, but also yeah. disposable. Okay, so S P A C. Give us the E. Yes. So E is equalize. Okay. So equalizing really means taking about 15 minutes a day yeah. to go back through your things, meaning your mail, yep. any to-dos that are Perfect. outstanding. So really trying to make sure that you're staying on top of those things. Got it. And this system needs to work for you. So if you find that you did put some lovely labels on here and they look fantastic, if they don't actually make sense to you, it's not going to work. Okay. This isn't my system. Right. It's supposed to be for each individual so re person. So reevaluate yes. and perfect. Yep. Uh, and make a new system. Mm -hmm. This has been so fantastic. Um, I'm embarrassed for you to to see my office. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to call you for that. But I'm going to call you for so much more because Great. I think you've really taught us that organizing is not just a closet business and no, it's not, not just an event business. Mm -hmm. um, it's essentially any way that an individual mm -hmm. needs to be more successful and needs to be able to reach their goals. Yep. They need somebody to be able to walk them through that they trust. Mm -hmm. um, and that is solely focused on organization and prioritization. And, yes. and uh, you're such a gift to all of us. So thank you, thank you for being here. And Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, Simon, what do people wear? Clothes. That's right, so it's important to learn how to dress yourself. Here's how it's done. Shirt, underwear, pants, socks, shoes. Underwear, always first, name tag on the back. Then pants and shirt, go ahead and put this on. Now with the shirt, you wanna make sure the first button's right or you have to start all over again, okay? Socks left on left, right on right, tying the shoes, we're gonna take the laces, we're gonna cross them over, we're gonna turn around where the bunny goes down in the hole, pull it tight, and bunny ears, got it? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes, but two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Okay. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Thanks to Stasia Steele, owner and COO, Chief Organizing Officer of The Little Details. Please remember to follow, like, and subscribe to Woman to Woman today on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube so you can stay up to date. Thanks to the entire team at Access Framingham. Thanks also to Ryan McCabe, our art director, and Jess Briswell, our go get em girl, who is our assistant director. I'm Jen Maceda, your host of Woman to Woman Today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Now, go inspire somebody.